As you gradually start getting familiar with the Swift landscape, one thing will be pretty obvious – the presence of design patterns. You will start noticing patterns such as observers, singletons, factories and many more. So why are design patterns important? Well, for one thing, experienced designers do not solve problems from scratch or first principles. Rather, they use solutions that have worked in the past. Design patterns capture these workable solutions. To take another example, imagine yourself as a movie director. When you think of a theme, you think patterns. Superhero, tragically flawed hero, etc. Once you know the pattern, design decisions automatically follow. So in this video, we will look at the singleton design pattern. Let's start with definitions. Okay, so why does this pattern exist? Well, the singleton pattern is a creational pattern. It affects the process of object creation. Great. And, and it ensures that a class has only one object instance. Now that's interesting. Typically, a class has many instances or objects, but one? Why would we need one? Well, take the example of the UI application class in Swift. Every app has exactly one instance of this class, and this instance handles the app's user events, among other things. It does not make sense for your app to have more than one instance. So in this video, we will see a simple example of the singleton pattern in Swift. So over to Xcode. Just one more thing, guys. If you like this video, don't forget to check out our cool Swift video courses. Apart from videos, you will have access to quizzes, reference material, discussion forums, and yes, certification. So if this sounds interesting at any point during this video, click here. Right, so we'll start by creating a new Xcode project, a single view application. I'm going to call it Singleton. The language will be Swift and the device, the iPhone. So let's create it. And now we'll go to our navigation window and add a new file to contain the singleton. So I'm going to select a Swift file. And let's call it My Singleton. So there are a few ways of creating this pattern, but I'm going to use one that uses a static member. And a static member guarantees that only one instance is created, which is our objective. So let's go ahead and create this file. So I'm going to call this class my singleton, and we'll create a static member. It'll be a constant, and let's call it shared instance, and assign to it an instance of my singleton. So just for testing purposes, I'm going to throw in a few more things. So let's create a counter variable that has an initial value of zero and a function that enables us to increment this counter. Okay, I'm not adding a getter method at the moment. Right, so now let's go ahead and test this out. So for that, we will go to the view controller. And I'm going to first remove code we do not need. So I'll remove this function out here. And also this comment out here. So now let's start by creating a variable called inst1. And I'm going to assign it the shared instance variable of my singleton class. And now let's go ahead and increment the counter. And finally, we will print the counter. OK, so now I'm going to go ahead and create another variable called inst2. And again, assign it the same shared instance. And the objective is to see whether they are actually sharing the instance or not. So again, I increment the counter out here. And finally, we will print the counter. OK, so now let's quickly test this out. And as you can see, we have values of 1 and 2, which show that both variables are sharing the one singleton instance. OK, let's quickly copy and paste this code out here and run the program once again. And as you can see, proof that both these variables are accessing the same instance. The question that now arises is whether I can break this uniqueness rule. And for that, let's try another thing. So I'm going to create another instance, the third instance. And this time, 
I'm going to initialize my singleton using its default initializer. And once again, we'll increment the counter. And let's print this incremented value. So let's see what happens. Okay, we're getting a value of 1 here, which proves that this is another instance. So why is that happening? Okay, we need to do another thing to maintain the singleton's uniqueness, and that is make the default initializer of the singleton private. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to add a private access specifier out here for the default initializer. And as you can see, our initializer has nothing at the moment, and we do not need anything as a matter of fact. So let, does that change things? As we go back here, we see we get an error. What's the error? My singleton cannot be constructed because it has no accessible initializers. So great. So now I just want to remove this code, and let's remove this code too. And there's one more thing we need to tackle. So by making the default initializer private, we have ensured that the only way to initialize my singleton is using the static shared instance. But the big question we have is, is this thread safe? For example, we could have two threads trying to initialize the singleton at the same time that could potentially give us two separate instances of the singleton. So essentially to tackle this, we need to wrap this initialization in a dispatch once GCD block. So does this happen automatically or will we need to do that? So let's find out. And for that, I'm going to add a couple of breakpoints. And now let's kick off the execution. And let's stretch things out a bit. Okay, so we are out here. So let's continue with the program and maybe run it once again. Okay, so as you can see, so it started at the main function out here, then we have moved to the view did load, then we came into this my singleton class. And it has initialized our singleton. But before that, so this line out here, dispatch once f, which indicates that this operation is thread safe. So that said, let us quickly remove this redundant code. So I'm going to remove this function out here. First remove the move the breakpoints. And then remove this function and variable out here. And there we have it or Singleton. Thanks a lot for watching this video guys, but please do not forget to subscribe to this channel, like and comment on this video, and share it with people who might find it useful.